Now, as you have seen, people who are leaving Ukraine are often going to Poland. A massive relief and support effort is underway there to help support them when they cross the border. Much of it is driven by volunteers, including my next guest, who we last saw winning the Grey Cup three months ago. Theodric Hansen plays in the Canadian Football League and is one of its global players. We connected with him in Western Poland. Hello and, and welcome to the program, Theodric. Hello, how are you doing? First, I want to ask you what it is that you're doing to help. Um, so I basically send a bus uh, to, to Warsaw, to the capital city of Poland. Um, there were some, some refugees who um, in a church that we picked up and we brought them to Hamburg um, in a place called Afrotopia. Um, this is like uh, an organization that helps them to connect them to flights um, also give them a better shelter than, than they have in the church. They have access to, to Wi-Fi and stuff like this. So, so basically, I just do like a small part of it. I just like organize the bus trip um, with, with uh, a friend of mine. I'm sure they don't feel it's a small part of their journey and whatever help that they can get is certainly much appreciated. We also know that you've been really focusing a lot of the help you've been given to on perhaps students. Um, there have been a lot of reports of some individuals facing racism as they were trying to cross the border. And that's been where you've been helping. Why is that? Yes, uh, because like I've seen, I've seen all around the world, uh, like all, all around uh, Poland, there's a lot of help. Um, but um, especially those people don't have the same options. Um, as maybe Ukrainians, because like, um, for example, in, in, in Poland, you can use the trains for free if you have a Ukrainian passport. And of course, they, they don't have that because they may maybe come from Nigeria, from Ghana. So they can travel with the train that easily. Um, and I thought like, okay, this, this is maybe in this place I can help, you know, this is, this is not, not hard for me. And, you know, I have like, with my partner, with Rakia Suleiman, she she did an amazing job to, to organize and connecting us with other organizations who are also helping. Um, our plan first was to go at the border, um, but it, it's changed because like you can't really organize much at the border because it's so chaotic right now because so many people live in there. And um, so she connected with, with, with the church in, in, in Warsaw and they had a bunch of people in there. Um, they needed to go to different, uh, like they wanted to switch them and I'm helping to connect to maybe, you know, some of the students have maybe a way, family somewhere, but they just can't, can't go right now because they have no Wi-Fi, they have no internet, they have no, um, they are not, have no access to, to really connect with their families. Um, so it's just an easier way from, and for especially when they be in Hamburg, um, there's an airport and stuff like this. So, so they, they have a better opportunity to connect, maybe to, to go back to their, to their home country or even with family over in Europe and stuff like this. Tell me about the, the moment where you decided not just to post about this or raise awareness about this, but actually do something about it. What was it that was motivating you in that moment? I don't know. I was, I was in the gym working out and I just saw a post and I said, okay, I'm going to post also about it. And, and then I thought to myself, you know, I'm Poland, I'm pretty close to the border. Maybe I can do do a little bit more um, because also like the organization that I'm working with, the, the Panthers, they... Um, they they shipping like uh, military gear over um, to, to to support the Ukrainian military, and you know and I, and I thought okay maybe I can ask them maybe they have a good bus bus connection and um, are working with an organization that I can you know connect people with buses and um, yeah they gave me they gave me the number I talked to the to the bus organization they helped me out um, they also had a um, food sponsor like the main sponsor of the team Tachinsky they they also ha helped me out with like a little bit of food for the refugees who were on the bus so they 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 sponsored us with um with like with their products and uh, that yeah they helped us I helped me out a lot and um yeah I was just in there and and I can't really tell what was the motivation to, to actually do more than just post but it was just like like a feeling okay I do this and I never did it before um so it was just spontaneous, basically. What's the experience been like so far in terms of those who you may have spoken to or encountered along the way as you're giving them help? What sort of stories have you heard? Um, I'm, I'm not having heard a, a lot of stories. You know, I, I wasn't talking much about them, how, how was the situation there. 
Um, it, it seemed like they were they were very, very relieved that they could leave. They could actually go to a place. Um, of course, you see see some stuff that like people who had like literally just a backpack, like a family. There was like three people, and they only had like like a backpack together and um, not really much stuff. There were people who don't even have shoes, uh, like like good shoes. They had like slides, um, ripped jackets, and you know they they come. It's all all different different stories for, for each people you know some some people manage to get like a little bit more some people literally, literally like have like the house bombed and um, left the country um, but like i can i can really tell you insights from stories because i don't i didn't want to ask people you know what how, what happened and blah, blah, blah. I, I, they just seem happy to to really to go to a place where where they can you know reconnect with, with families and stuff